And now time for the Dean of men's tennis players, Andre Agassi at 35 in his 20th consecutive U.S. Open. He sets a record with this appearance, most in the open era in Grand Slams, as 59th slam for Agassi. And Tomas Burdic serving to open the match. There's that big yeah. forehand. Exactly. That's what he's capable of. He, why he's so dangerous. He's incredible power, like someone we just saw, James Blake. Blow the ball by you. But Blake really winds up and takes a terrific cut at it. That looks so smooth and easy, Burdich, to get that power. He's loosey goosey, Burdich, and that gives him a lot of power because his timing is good. He's 6 4, one of four teens in the top 50 in men's tennis. and. His serve is very big, but <laughs> Agassi survived Ivo Karlovic, 6-10 in the last round, so he's well warmed up. His return game for this one. He doesn't want to allow Burdish to dictate the play, to get him on the defensive. He wants to be able to step in and move Burdish around, force him to go for too much. Easy hold as Agassi unable to put a ball in play. The complexion of this U.S. Open Championship on the midsize, for the men's side, certainly changed by Blake's upset of Rafael Nadal. Agassi in the same quarter with Blake, and an opportunity opening for this veteran who has won this title twice. that shot from Burdich again that big forehand he's got a lot more power than most guys and a lot of guys hit with pace here's Agassi's draw and Melise is playing well Blake is on through it's a tricky section an awful lot of talent Roddick is out of the other quarter so the two guys he expected to perhaps play in the semis are both out Burdich had to win two matches here to go over 500 for the year. If you want to know how tough the death is in men's tennis. Has only one career title. That was a year ago, Palermo. Grew up in the Czech Republic where the only hard courts were inside, clay outside. But his game is pretty well suited to the hard court, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I watched him beat Roger Federer in Athens at the Olympics last summer. Federer had some match points, and Burdich was able to deny him those. And it was one of the very few times I saw Federer lose his cool, throwing his racket around, because this guy was hitting so many big shots. It was a very windy day, too. Burdich admits Federer was not at his best, but that's a very difficult thing to do to beat Federer on any day. He usually figures out ways to win. He's the number three Czech player behind Radek Stepanek and uh, Yuri Novak, both of whom are out of the this open. Hey! Novak had a default in the second round. That opened the door for Masu, who's now in the fourth round. And you can see that Agassi's in for a contest here already. This, Guy's not a pushover. Mm, double fault gives Burdich an early break point. yesterday and ask him about playing in this arena against a 
legend in front of his fans. He sensed the pressure. He said, no, actually, I think that might be the only advantage I have, that no one expects me to win. They'll all be cheering for Agassi, and if I can take the crowd out of the match, uh, maybe I can pull it off. Well, the energy level is down in this stadium right now, coming off the huge James Blake win. So this is a nice opportunity for Burditch to make something happen while the crowd is still quiet and reorganizing their thoughts and emotions. Seems like it's just a casual return. Yeah. And Agassi looks up and the ball's by him. On a second serve for Burditch at break point. Also, Mary, the crowd assumes. I mean, there's a lot of tennis fans, but there's a lot of just sports fans here. They're assuming Agassi's going to get through this, so. They're getting a hot dog. Get, get, a, get a little break. He'll be back. You see Agassi already respecting Burdich's forehand, trying to play to the backhand side. And scores his first ace at 128. And another. So a good dig by Agassi out of a couple of breakers. Tracy Wolfson talked with Burdich just before he came on court. Tomas, you weren't even one year old when Agassi played his first match here at the Open. Growing up, did you ever think you'd be here at the Open playing him on center court? So for me, it's a very nice feeling because that's what you say. It's it's very strange. He's, he's the tennis legend, so it's going to be very nice today. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to play with him on the center court today. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Charming young guy. He'll be 22 weeks from today. Dad, uh, a lifetime man on the rails, an engineer. Train, he says, as a kid, he'd sit on his dad's lap, ride up in the big old locomotive. Mother's a medical doctor, a general practitioner. They're both here. Consistency's been the issue with Burdish. He started the year pretty poorly, and when the expectations were rising because you can see the talent he does have he's rebounded this summer to get to around the best the highest ranking he's ever had and this would be a huge step for him to me is moving surprisingly well at, at, at this tournament. 35 years of age. He's pulled out of a couple tournaments this summer. And he's covering some ground. He looks very comfortable. Claims the back and the hips are not a problem right now. And that is well done. Fans remember in the French Open first round, he was in the lead against Jarko Niemann and then that sciatic nerve uh, started to bite and uh, he could barely walk. Skipped uh, Wimbledon, took cortisone shots, trying to get himself back in shape, and picked his spots this summer. Won in L.A. and made it to the finals in Montreal. On serve early. Third round, U.S. Open. You know, Andre, who's been so successful in raising money for charity, speaks uh, from the heart. I would 
thought that Agassi's game plan was to get this guy in the run. If he can do that consistently, it's going to be a long day for Andre. Verdic has not dropped the set. You can see why. He's just striking the ball so well. His coach wants to see him get into the net more. Use it at that height. Yaro Navratil in the yellow t-shirt and his parents watching on. Martin and Hanna. Double fold and then an ace to answer for Agassi. That's his third. Not necessarily big, but so well placed. That one, 120 in the corner. Look at that one again. He's serving pretty big, Andre, here early. It's a nice return. He just flicked at it and just, again, this comes back in a hurry. Andre's used to doing that to his opponent. Verdic with a couple of break points in the first Agassi service game and another here. And the double fault gives Burdich a 3-1 lead. Three doubles. Well, it's been delightful today, the action. And tomorrow, here's what's in store for you on CBS. Beginning at 11 in the morning Eastern time, Hewitt and Dan, followed by number one seed Cherapova and the Indian sensation Sonia Mirza. And then the Williams sisters, often seen in prime time, or in finals, will play in the fourth round tomorrow. I guess he looks like a guy, Dick, who's got the pressure on him. Now, all of a sudden, he's the highest seed in that quarter, and you know, people have said, oh, well, he might be all the way in the semis. Slow start. He's usually a quick starter. <laughs> Snap that return. Amazing nine checks in the top hundred for the men. That equals the U.S. total nine. You can see Agassi mincing around, very fussy fellow. Measuring every one of his steps and trying to get himself going. And he goes up against this this guy, Burdich, who's all loose and jangly. And kind of like Gustavo Kirton. Hmm. Totally different body awareness of these two. He's young, too. He's 19. So he's going to try to get into his head. The way Blake was able to against Nadal. He's not going to win a flexibility contest, obviously. With Beardich. Realizing, wait a minute, this guy, Andre may need a little help here. This guy's playing. Oh. Burdich's best slam was here last year. Made it to the fourth round loss to Tommy Haas, played here on this court. He played once before. Andre beat him pretty easily at the Australian straight sets. That was his uh, first year in the slams, Burdich. 
Love two and four. Not today. But I remember going to that press conference afterwards and listening to Andre say that this kid is very talented. <laughs> Things are getting a little closer in that third set. Second ace, Burdich. And he has a 4-1 lead, opening set, third round. U.S. Open, 125th U.S. national title. Number seven seed, Andre Agassi, in a 1-4 hole in this opening set against Tomas Burdich. And the veteran with all his guile trying to figure a way against his younger opponent. One thing he's not been able to do yet is get him on the run. There you go, right on the cue. This one stretched out. And that's what his, certainly his game plan will be. Andre played his first U.S. Open in 1986. Burdich had just been born. And this is the old and the new of the game. Yet to find the range, Agassi. Not settled in. And the hold for two, Burdich. And 27 miles an hour, his fastest of the championship has been 139. It's that first ball in, he's winning almost every point. He will try to break down the Burdich backhand side. He's still trying to get himself moving. It's the only way his game stays as meticulous as he needs it to be. He hasn't got the firepower of so many of the guys he faces these days. Thank you. He normally makes his opponent run a double, a triple, what he has to in a best of five seven. Actually wears them down. It's tougher to pull off against Burdich. He hits such a big ball. around that birdie so it's 6-4. He covers some court. He's not slow. Point here for 5-2. Ah. <laughs> 
had what he wanted. He'll walk off that miss. If he's fit enough, he's going to give Agassi fits. That's a big second serve. And the ace at 127, 5 2 Burdich. CBS Sports coverage of the Open continues after this message and a word from your local station. Exterior of Ash Stadium. Uh, many fans taking a late afternoon break. 4 20 in the afternoon here in New York. Live third round action and Andre Agassi is serving to stay in this opening set. He's found his opponent a very tough young man so far. Yeah. Other action currently the Frenchwoman uh, not lead the she takes uh, the young Golovan. Coria and Soderling have split sets. Caught the line. There was the big surprise. James Blake knocking out number two, Rafael Nadal. Masu in straights against Vavrinka. Gasquet and five rallies from two sets to one down to excuse Lubacic. And NR Den started easy, then had the battle to win that second set. The hopes of a has upset Mesquina, the 13th seed, and Mencheva rallied to take the third set, 76. Schneider over Asagoi. Busy Saturday and uh, plenty of action again tomorrow. 40 15 here at 2 5. Four aces. Now Burdich to serve out the set. Based upon current events, American Express and the USTA will now be donating funds raised during the rest of the American Express ACES program to support the Red Cross Hurricane Katrina relief efforts. For every ace served in Arthur Ashe Stadium, the American Express card will donate $100 to that effort. Effortless that forehand and it just like jumps off shot. his rack. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It doesn't seem like it, he's proof that you don't need a huge backswing. He's got some real racket speed, but he makes it look rather easy. If you have good timing, you can make such great use of all that elastic power. You snap into the ball. And again, he's known as a, a streaky player, Burdich, and that's his first double fault against four aces so far.
His big wins over Federer, over Nadal, have come in two or three set matches, not three of five. It sure looks like Andre Agassi is going to need more than straight sets to beat him. Verdic's two points away from owning the set. Another huge serve. Two set points with it. Verdic camp, parents and coach. They have to be enjoying what they're observing. And you've got to think if Verdic sitting in that locker room watching a huge upset right before he plays. Blake beating Nadal. He goes in there thinking, all right, I got a shot too. There goes the first set in 31 minutes. Punctuated with another big forehand for Tomas Burdic. Agassi opens the second set, trying to find some play that'll awaken this crowd. Burdic. Stole the noise in that opening set, 6-3, outplaying the 35-year-old. Very solid set. And there's another <laughs> big-time forehand. It was only one break, but it, feel, it felt like more, didn't it? It really it did. It just really felt like Burdich was in control. Agassi just watching. Some of those winners go by. <laughs> just like that. Well, he realizes what a great opportunity he has here to get a real foothold in this match and take it to Agassi if he can get up early in the second. And power is the ultimate equalizer. It seems like Andre's trying to go toe to toe instead of working a little bit harder on these points. Mm. I think that's, uh, he's got to bring the lunch pail, as he likes to say. Yeah. He's got to work harder. And start to get rewarded for it, I believe. And he holds to open the second. And we'll peek ahead tomorrow, our seven hours. And then Cherapova and Mirza. How has Sharapova looked to you, Mary, so far? She looks very good. She looks good. She looks hungry. Oh, Ooh. man. <laughs> Can you even see that ball? I guess he hasn't returned well either. He doesn't have a target like he did against Karlovich. And Bird sir, stays back. Boy, that's witty. I just, I just unleashed it. <laughs> See, Burdich wearing the Nike, and it's interesting that Agassi, after 18 years with Nike, has switched to Adidas this year, and it all came about because of his charitable program for youth there, the Academy in Las Vegas. He insists that all of his sponsorships be involved and contribute to um, his Academy, which Adidas was happy to do. He's up the set here. He's only played a half hour or so. Fans finally had something something to cheer up, cheer about. And now they're getting into it. Now they, they recognize that Andre Agassi could use a little help, a little energy. Agassi 
Tennessee has not had a great point chance yet. Here it is, says now. Forces the air and Agassi leads too low. Network. Ber Berner swings for a second serve ace. Andre didn't even hit it cleanly, barely got it back. This is what Mary was talking about. He's streaky up and down and he's hit a down pass. Agassi looking to jump on him. He missed that forehand by 10 feet. Your strokes are long and loose, and your attitude is kind of loose as well. You're going to lose control if you get a little bit tight. Eight forehand winners already for Burdich. Yeah, that's why Agassi wants to play over on the other side <laughs> as much as possible. Good pop on that serve, 125. Andre is certainly aware coming in that Burdich's forehand is his most dangerous weapon. So as soon as he's given the chance, there's Gil Reyes watching, taking care of Andre. For 15 years, more. He's really been a, not only a trainer, but a confidant. Mm -hmm. Best friend. <laughs> Along with Andre's manager, Perry Rogers. Yeah, he's yeah. been with him from the time he was about 13 years old. He was a good buddy. Another guy with a good, solid ball club behind him, just like James Blake's. Another point here for three love in the second. Roger uh, perhaps would be better off taking a little bit off that first serve, making sure he gets it in, because Burdish really is attacking his second serve. I think that's why he got broken early in the match. He was trying to serve too hard. Uh, he slices it wide. Ace number six. Burdich uh, felt it was just there. Tomas Burdich, 19 year old from the Czech Republic, owned the first set 6 3. Agassi is up a break 3 love here in the second. That's the pinpoint shot making that fans expect from Agassi. Well, Agassi's looking to hurt him on the second serve as well and take charge of the point, which he does here. Not highly recommended on hard courts that slide, but a lot of players doing it. 
Burch has lost his concentration here and confidence. He's upset with himself there. He was just looking to get some depth and use some heavy topspin. Ball went long on him. in the second as we remind you to secure the second set. That high kicker to the backhand seems to be very effective for Agassi. Look at this huge stadium 23,000 plus here. I think he's better off like he's doing here, taking something off the serve, putting some more spin on it. That's a tougher shot for Burdich to deal with. Plus three, British minus one, and the error is done forced. I mean, the winner's done forced. like that you say too good. The question is can we keep that level play up long enough to beat Andre. I think that's why Andre was a little aggravated with himself that he didn't get that cushion break in the last game knowing that Burdich a couple of swipes of the racket and he could be losing that break lead. TA Tennis Center in Flushing Meadows, Dick Enberg, Mary Carrillo, John McEnroe, and the Ash Stadium, where Andre Agassi is trying to square this match at a set all after losing the first set 6 3. He leads 4 1 here in the second. Agassi, when he won in Los Angeles uh, this summer, made it 60 titles in his grand career, eight of those. Slams, one of only five men in history with a career slam, winning all four majors. And another error from Bird 
pitch's end. Korea trying to take a two set to one lead over on the grandstand against Soderling. Yuzhny and Melise, whoever wins there, meets the winner of this match here at Ash in the fourth round. Golovan trying to force that match with Deshi, two French women, to a third set. And another error from Burdich in a loose game. Three break points for Agassi for a double break lead. You can see why he's a bit of a diamond in the rough still. It's consistency not there. Cranked up 130 miles on that one. He's frustrated that he's let this set slip away so quickly. 1 4, 15 40. Save. Another chance for Agassi at 30 40. There's a second break, and the good news for Andre, he's not playing as well as he's capable of. So there's room for improvement. He's about to level this match at one set all. It's played quickly. You're going to be under an hour probably the first two sets. So he should have plenty left in the tank. If there's one thing Agassi's probably better at now than he ever has been in his long career, it's at conserving energy and focusing his efforts when he needs to. Stopping yeah. the point here, which is uh, well, he made a call. The uh, linesman, yeah, I think he called it out. And and here comes the line. Yeah, yeah. linesman is coming over to the chair umpire, Carlos Ramos. You're gonna play a lot. Burdich didn't hear it either. learn better how to conserve and, and focus his efforts it's uh, truly in deference to his age it's, it comes from necessity not necessarily design and to pull out of Wimbledon in one tournament then pulled out of two other hardcore tournaments this summer he's got to pick his spots Toro went between the legs, played lefty, behind <laughs> the back. This is when you know the set's over. And Burtis is showing that type of shot. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Four double faults from Agassiz's end. Two points from the set. Up a double break here to try to square it up. Agassi uh, looking into the sun. That last toss apparently right in it. Finishes that 
shot so beautifully. You should just get some tapes of Andre Agassi hitting some ground strokes. His preparation, his footwork, his follow through. A quick set for Andre. Couple of set points here for a set apiece. She'll be able to remember Daddy playing. Of course, the son will. He, uh, when he talks about his wife, it's just uh, it's exciting to hear a man speak with, in such uh, loving terms of his partner in life. How much he respects her in his speech. And You're still crying about that oh, one. Man, that was one of the great <laughs> ones. <laughs> that, well, I cried at read that anyway. I was going to say. And there's Mama, wife Steffi. Between the two of them, 30 Grand Slam titles. Uh, she managed only 22 in her <laughs> incredible career. needs to grab some momentum here. He played so well in that first set and then you just see it erode in the second set. He needs a good start here early in the third to regain his confidence, get some momentum. Work a little bit on that concentration. That's going to help him break into the top 20. Currently ranked 39th and seated 32nd. That was long. So a break point early for Agassi here in the third. And Burdick's first serve percentage is, is not good enough. And Agassi's taking advantage. Agassi is not all that great either, but Burdick's has slipped considerably here. He doesn't have the rep yet. Andre deserved the best returner in the history of the game. That Burdick isn't at that level. Decided to take a little off that for a serve. Good idea. And another breaker for Agassi. so quickly and frustrates his opponent as he has the early break in the third. Well, it took him a while to pick up on his serve, but he sure has now. That swing vision working again on Andre's serve. And that is a part of his game that he's really improved to me over the course of the last four or five years. Looks like the back's in pretty good shape. He's a good spot server, isn't he? And again, it's not always about power with him at all. It's about moving it around the box. And Getting 
his opponents off balance on their return games. And that sets up the rest of his game. And he really needed it. These aces are coming at, that's nine. I mean, that's that's a lot for an Andre Agassi match. He's, he's, it's not like he goes for aces. Quite a run here, seven of eight games. The last seven of eight won by Agassi. The thing is, it's a sneaky good serve that Andre has got. When he is playing his best tennis these days, it's his serve that's doing a lot of the setup work for him. is still in that stage that Andre was in here at the Open about 20 years ago. Great shot maker, very flashy. But Andre has learned how to play points, not just hit shots. More great spot serving from Agassi. That's number 10. He's slicing it off the center line. Winner of this to meet either Michael Yuzny or Xavier Melise. Looks like Yuzny right now up a set in 4 1. <laughs> Melise, another wildly talented player. Like Burdett, she gets wild. Too low, Agassi. In the lead here in the third. Eight out of nine won by Agassi. And obviously, Burdich wants to get a higher percentage of first serve, get some free points, but it'd be nice to see if he had a, a plan B, if he could alter or subtly change his game to get back in this match. Or if his only chance is just hope that he can hit his way back into it. Victoria and Soderling and Yuzny and Melise still at work outside. Wow. And that's the way he struck the ball in the first set. For those of you just joining us, uh, 5 o'clock in the evening here in New York. Earlier today, Justine N. Arden, U.S. champion two years ago, victorious in straights. And then James Blake upset number two seed Rafael Nadal in four. Much to the delight of this huge crowd, a record crowd in New York. And the news of that incredible disaster continues. Hopefully those poor souls that have been uh, trapped in that city and in the south and have lost everything are going to find some support. Agassi here leading in the third set 2-1 but falls behind. Well now it's 15 all. And they cranked that one up to 127 number 11. That's the hardest serve. He's, well, almost the hardest. And his serve has is, is become better. As, it's like a defined wine. He's amazing. And part testimony to his incredible work habits and how hard he trains and weight lifting, which he's done much of this summer. They changed the routine because of the back problems, but he puts in more hours. Who got away with one that appeared to be long, at least... Uh, Burdich didn't think that was in play. Let's see what Matt Cam says. 
from here to the cross. It did look to be long. Matt Cam's on a break, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a long, long day. day. <laughs> That's a nice movement from Andre. He's really covering some court. He's very smooth looking. Three one. Agassi in the third. A set all. And he gets up there in a hurry. Chips and charges. He's looking a lot younger than 35. server in the shadows and the returner in the sunlight did you really feel that made it a little tougher or like the pitcher and batter when the sun it is splitting can them? absolutely you know, the sun ducks behind some clouds The electronic mind calling that was tested and ultimately abandoned here at the U.S. Open was just not consistently accurate enough for the USGA to implement. That was the problem. I'm All kinds of factors to take into consideration. They're hoping it'll be ready by next year, but shadows, lighting, reflection, the lens focal points. It's most consistent under night lighting. But in the day with the sun popping in and out, shadows, light coming from different angles, all cause problems with the ball recognition. And that's why it's not here this year. But it's on its way. <laughs> Man, thanks, Maria. 1-800-H-E-L-P is Agassi trying to protect that 3-2 lead here in the third. Opens with a winner. And you have... Louis Armstrong Stadium here, the second show court. And of course, Armstrong was born in New Orleans and the International Airport, they're named after him. Just mind boggling those pictures. Andre Agassi hits such a clean ball. If you hit it back to him, when you've run around your back and you leave a court open, you're asking for trouble. This timing is so great. He's also probably the best wind player I've ever seen. The wind seems to be kicking up out there a bit. And uh, it's not good news for Burdich. Why do you think that is? Because he gets the ball so early? Or well, he's, he's got a short backswing. He grew up in Vegas, windy conditions. He's so strong, the upper body. He's actually one of the only guys that I've heard talk about preferring to play against the wind than with it behind him. There's a couple good points here now at 30 all. He needs to get back, I think, into this third set if he wants to come back and beat Andre. Well, the wind is freshening. This late afternoon, 10 after 5. Four two Agassi in the third. As you know, the number one American network. He's ha he has a hard time birded for those short forehands. Those are the kind of shots that most guys are looking to hit, looking to create for themselves. 
But, uh, and as much as his coach wants him to play the net more, use his great wingspan and power. Still not quite comfortable up there. Look at all the errors now. It's also poor footwork. He's not getting himself in the proper position. She has gone three. Two French women in uh, the Fed Cup final will feature France against Russia at Roland Garros right after the U.S. Open, and it's almost entirely sold out. It's going to be on Court Central and Roland Garros. Moresmo will be playing Pierce. Still don't know the rest of the team. France supports its national teams in a big way. There should be some atmosphere for the women's version of Davis Cup, the Fed Cup final. Mentieva, again, even though she suffered through 19 of her own double faults, came on through, and the tough lefty Patty Schneider had an easy win. And a good hold for Burdich. It's 4-3 in the third. Welcome back to the stadium court, Ash Stadium. Elandre Agassi at 4-3. Deals his 12th ace. shot from Agassi. He's going to spin to bring it down just inside the baseline. People don't realize how good he can play defense. And then he turns around and takes the offensive. Burnish has not been consistent enough these last couple sets. He's going to have to hope, I think, Agassi's level of play drops. Points now for 5-3, and Agassi has done just exactly what he enjoys most about playing this great sport. The analysis of the opponent. And then he starts picking away. told us how he delights in preventing his opponent from that opponent doing what he wants to do best. Watching my opponent never get the chance to do what it is they do so well. If there's a certain shot that is your wheelhouse, it's what your go-to, it's what you count on, it's what pays your bills, that's what I want you to be so frustrated at that you don't get a chance to do at all and if it happens I only want it to happen a few times and I actually want it to happen when it doesn't really matter that much. But plants the seed is what Andre is suggesting. Has he taken away 
what Burdich feels most comfortable well, doing. He's gotten inside his head, and that's that's important right there. And he's certainly Burdich has felt the pressure more. I mean, he's just he's he wasn't. I mean, obviously he came out with nothing to lose. He was relaxed. Agassi was the one that really wasn't ready to play and probably thought that match was going to go longer with Blake and Nadal. He weathered the early Burdich storm, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And the 19-year-old British played so well that first set. But if, even though Andre lost that last point, I mean, his movement is so good right now. Now, with a break advantage in his pocket, he knows regardless here, he'll be serving for a two sets to one lead. Taking his racket back early enough. Ended up catching it a little late. He wants to make Andre at least serve this out here in the third set. So from 40, love to deuce. That forehand is not as effective when he's on the run. It's not like a James Blake who hits a lot of winners on the run. Nadal, he, he likes that time to set it up and then unleash it. So you have to learn to improve that shot. Something tells me Based on his abilities, he have burners. He will improve it. I think you're going to see a lot from this guy in the future. And he does hold. Agassi serves for the lead when we return. Welcome back to New York. This 2005 U.S. Open Championship, the finale of the Grand Slam season. Andre Agassi trying to move into the second week of action. Serves for a two set to one lead at 5-4 in the third. Continues to pick off some easy service points. did a good job of getting himself set up. Now, that was the type of footwork and preparation to help him get back in this match. Oh, just out of the reach of Agassiz. And a little opening here for Burdich at 15:30. Well, sure was. First the let core, and then a bit of a miss hit here. Good, good flick of the wrist, though. Pull it back cross court. Hey. 
Serving percentage isn't high. He's been at about 50% for the whole match, but when he needs a, an important first serve, it seems there for him. Takes him to set point for the two set to one lead. from Burdich. You see the difference between the first and second serve. He can move inside the baseline and look where he had an attempt to hit that ball. I mean, it, it came back quickly. Burdich just stare at the service line and then at the cheer on par Carlos Ramos, but Stare at Cyclops because that's who's making the call. Now he's staring at another set point. Mm. That's his 15th forehand winner in the match. He likes to step around that backhand and hit that shot with uh, to the pace. It's, it's unreturnable. Well, he actually hit that forehand on the run pretty well and sent himself up. He had a good chance. Missed that way long. That was his 16th forehand error. Agassi, two sets to one. <laughs> uh, signals the opening point of the fourth set as Agassi, after losing the first set 6-3, has come back 6-1 and 6-4 to take the lead and earns the first point here in the fourth set. Always a crowd pleaser. Something I love to see when they go around the net post and get it in. And he had that lined up and barely missed it. Be a good idea, British slowing things down because he can ill afford to get behind in this set. That's not been a particularly long match, so that may be benefit British's chance. They've only been out there an hour and 38 minutes. They've already played three sets. Hard to believe the, the span with uh, Enormous talent has only one career title, as John McEnroe suggested. Uh, before his career is over, we're going to see him in the winner's circle many a time. He takes the opening game. Fourth set underway. Agassi in the lead. Two sets to one. And trying to move on to the fourth round. Should they continue to win, they would meet on Wednesday night in the quarterfinals. But the players that you've seen today, basically the same that we will see again on Monday, Labor Day Monday, in our coverage live from the U.S. Open. 
Lindsay Davenport, the number one player in the world, the number two seed here, she plays tonight. <laughs> and has looked very sharp. She too, uh, with some back problems, leaving Wimbledon. Seems very fit, and, uh, and she seeks her second U.S. Open title. Seven double faults. That's a high number for Agassi. Twelve aces. You can see why he is still dangerous. I just got to keep that concentration. Keep the pressure on Burdich. That serve has been very effective for him. Number 13, and it's one all. Tonight, on well, you've seen all the matches, John McEnroe, of this. He's called all US the matches. Open. I think he has, in fact, and he's going to be calling them more tonight. <laughs> Which one has intrigued you the most? What's been the best action? Was it Blake and the doll, or was it last night, Federer and uh, Santoro? As far as that feel-good story, it's James, because we've chronicled what he's gone through, and to see him on the other side and so happy and playing so well. But that the, sh the shot making last night, I mean, I think if players were watching that match, they should take something from that. How entertaining that was, the variety of shots. Thirty, a couple of finals in, and Guillermo Coria has advanced in four, and Natalie Dashi, veteran over youngster in three. Yusni loses the third set to Melise, two sets to one, the winner to meet the winner of this match. I think what Santoro showed last night is that the way to get Federer a little off you know, create timing issues for him. And people try to do it with pace all the time and it doesn't worry Federer. But with off speed, with spins, which is what Nadal used to beat him at the French. You know, try to get Federer out of his comfort zone. It's not easy. But if you, he can get in trouble at times when the ball is slower or higher. Because then the timing of Federer's shots includes waiting and adjusting. And that's what someone like Fabrice Santoro posed to him last night, and that's why it was an entertaining match. Now the defending champion, Federer, Olivier Rokas is his next opponent. He's got See, a little... Now, next this guy, now Bandian used to drive Federer nuts because he would create timing issues for him, not giving him a lot of, a lot of speed, a lot of pace. Well, Olivia Rokas would attempt to do that tomorrow. Exactly. At 5-5. Five, five. He shows that a little guy can do some pretty good things on a tennis court. Playing very well. They stay on serve in the four. CBS Sports coverage of the U.S. Open continues after this message. And a word from your local station. With the additions, those beautiful fountains out in the plaza. They've just done a wonderful job here on the grounds of beautifying the environment, adding those fountains and the draw board and painting all the courts blue. That was a six figure item.
How deep can you go? Agassi must have hit five balls right on the baseline. Well, one looked to be long, and that's what uh, Burdick is complaining about. Give me a call. I'm in trouble here. Only second out. I don't know. I'm from the ball. He's, he's found his game. He's found his game. He's playing better, Burdick. He's looking to take this, extend this possibly to the fifth set if he can. It's well done. See, he covers some ground. This guy's easily got potential to be top ten. Big long strides. A couple three steps and he's baseline right there. Tell you, it's a tough draw for Agassi. They'd have to play Karlovic second round, this guy third round. Snap. Just definite challenge. He's working. Up. Darren Cahill, Agassi's coach. Just like I taught you, kid. <laughs> I guess he's a surprisingly effective drop shot. The guy used, likes to hit the ball so hard, he's got some nice touch. There it is again. <laughs> Rubbed it in. Two all in the fourth. Sonia Mirza, you'll. If you haven't seen this young 18-year-old from India, she has a big game and a nice on-court personality as well. Terrific forehand for Mirza. And then the Williams sisters will hit in the cleanup spot. How about Venus yesterday or last night when she won? You've been saying you better all come out. Did a whole uh, promotion for the Sunday and see the sisters play. I think at this point she's uh, been the more solid performer through the first three rounds. Uh, Serena's had some ups and downs and pretty edgy in her last uh, win. likes this play. Yeah, he moves around the backhand. He can do anything with that forehand. The inside out, took something off it. It's good thinking by Tomas. Oh, goes in. That's why. And a little luck never hurts. Complete miss hit from Andre. Goes over anyway. Brings a smile to his face. It's got to be a little hard to get your timing against a, a guy like Beardich because he's even now, you know, we're in the fourth set and his game still seems sort of random. He goes from really nice ball striking to missing and missing big, and then he's right back in your face again with a big shot. So Burdich is not going away. Agassi in the lead, two sets to one. And welcome back. 
Arthur Ashe Stadium Court here at the UST National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadows. Dick Enberg, John McEnroe, Mary Carrillo, Rick Eisen, Mary Jo Fernandez, Bill McAtee, Patrick McEnroe, the CBS team here. Part of our more than 20 hours of coverage on this Labor Day weekend, and Andre Agassi leading two sets to one, serving at 2-3 here in the fourth against Tomas Burdic. Approaching 10 minutes before 6 New York time and uh, we're running out of our allotted time for today but we will continue our coverage on USA as uh, we go at the 6 o'clock hour to the CBS lo local news. Of course continuing coverage of the hurricane disaster. So CBS news to follow. And uh, for you tennis fans, uh, switch over to the USA Network. Where I'll do my impersonation of Ted Robinson. <laughs> mm. I'll do my impersonation of John McEnroe. <laughs> Ubiquitous John McEnroe. Peripatetic. Well, there's seems that Agassi has taken command and yet a couple of points away and Burdich picks up his Boy, that ooh, caught spirits. the outside of the line. This is a you just I think you just hit the nail on the head, Dick. All of a sudden the ball was called in. This is break point now. It looks like it caught the outside of the line. So can give Burdich a 4-2 lead in the fourth set. We can win this point. <laughs> that is oh, some wow. play. Some magnificent footwork from Agassi. Burdich had been moving so well to get behind these shots. Andre had to go for the winner. And he found it. Boy, under the high pressure, deliver with brilliance. Looks like the player he was in the first set. I mean, his level of play has picked up considerably here the last 15 minutes. And the heavy hitting, not only from the forehand side, he's struck some wicked backhands here the last couple of games. Another break point. Agassi has always had one of the best overheads. Around, he needed to prove it again there. Burdich did well to get this ball back. That could easily become a quite a tricky shot. Yeah, there's just enough wind to put added pressure on the play. bigger than that. Third break point for Burdich. Who hasn't broken Agassi since the opening set. looks up to his coach and said, hey, I had a big return, which he did. Agassi has handled himself very well on these break points. 
Very good tennis being played. dictating on that point well earned game point for three all at the two hour mark now this match and the 35 year old seems to be perhaps just a little bit fitter three all 14 aces for Agassi and before we leave you here on CBS, a rundown of all the final results today. Hope your favorite has advanced to the fourth round. More third round action tomorrow. We'll open up play at 11 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Somebody just shouted Agassiz's name as the server's going up. Berta still is breathing hard. It's not good when you're the one who's serving. This is where you stall and take time and gather yourself, recover, make sure you take care of your own serve. Throw the pressure back on the other side. Well, there goes the first two points. Again, a reminder that in a few minutes, uh, we'll be switching to CBS News to update all the hurricane disaster information so stay tuned to CBS but for those of you who want to follow the conclusion of this match from the US Open we will continue our call on USA Network and tomorrow beginning at 11 o'clock Eastern time you'll see former US Open champion Leighton Hewitt and Taylor Dent Dent playing some wonderful serve in volley tennis Number one seed Sharapova against Sonia Mirza, the Indian, and then Venus and Serena Williams, one of the Williams to advance into the second week. And, uh, two of the great players in the game dueling on the middle Sunday and not on the final weekend. You see what Bert is, what he's up against. I guess he is such a great player. I mean, he dug deep again. Just wouldn't let Burtis break him. This is the first break opportunity for Agassi in this set. Perhaps try to hit that a little too hard. <laughs> too good a serve. Still has break point though. crowd in a hurry. Serving his way out of the 1540. Let's go Andre they chant. Number nine. As we remind you tonight on CBS, Big Brother, CSI, 48 Hours Mystery of the lineup. After your local news. <laughs> Coverage of this match will continue on the USA Network. In less than a minute, as we switch you to your local news outlet on CBS for the latest on recovering from the hurricane disaster. Andre Agassi leading two sets to one. They're on serve here in the fourth. The winner to move on to the fourth round of this U.S. Open Grand Slam championship. 
big day of tennis here highlighted by James Blake's comeback from disaster personal disaster and health disaster a year ago he upset Rafael Nadal the number two seeded player we'll see you more tomorrow on CBS stay tuned on the other side at USA Network